So ChatGPT plugins and browser access are finally rolling out. Let's see how good they are and what they can really do. First up, here's how you access them. Log into ChatGPT. You will need a plus account to do this. Go up to settings. You should see a little switch up here that says beta features. If you click on that, you can enable both of these and that will give you access to browsing and plugins. Now, when you start a new chat, you should see under GPT-4, you have the option to go into browsing mode or you have the option to go into plugins mode. If you go into plugins mode, you'll then need to enable the plugins in order to use them. So how you do that is this, you click to expand this and head over to the plugins store. You'll then see a whole bunch of plugins. And to be honest, it's a bit of a free for all in here. I've got a few plus accounts and I see different plugins in each one and they don't seem to be categorized. So it's not massively easy to find the ones that you're gonna need, but you can read about each one with a little text. And then when you find one that you actually want to use, you can click install. Now you can install as many plugins as you like at this stage, but when you come to use an individual chat, you'll only be able to use a maximum of three plugins. But now you have plugins installed, you'll be able to see them in this section here. And if you want to enable them for a chat, all you need to do is click them. ChatGPT can now call on these plugins when it wants information that they have. For example, if we wanted to call the Expedia plugin, we might say, how much does a flight from Heathrow to LAX? I'm going quickly. You can see ChatGPT then calls the Expedia plugin and will then give you an answer based on the data that's provided. You can then click on the drop down to see what the initial request from ChatGPT was. You can see in this case, we've got the origin airport Heathrow, the destination airport LAX, and then a departure date, which is tomorrow. And then you can see the information that comes back from Expedia. ChatGPT is then taking this information, just presenting it in a plain English way. So that's how they work, but how good actually are they? Well, the promise has been huge. Since March, we've had stories like ChatGPT GPT can now connect to the internet, book holidays, and find restaurants. In OpenAI President Greg Brockman's TED Talk, he showed how ChatGPT with the browser plugin could actually fact check its own answers. And with access to the Shopify Shop plugin and the Klarna plugin, ChatGPT can now recommend products to us to help us find cool things that we might want to buy. Or at least that's the promise. So how well do these plugins live up to that promise? As we know, one of the key limitations of ChatGPT and all large language models is factual accuracy. So one of the most exciting plugins to see being integrated is the Wolfram Alpha plugin. Now Wolfram Alpha is essentially a database of knowledge, collecting statistics and figures about all sorts of things. It can do maths, it can tell you about famous people called Steven, and it can even show you how many hits their Wikipedia pages have had. So ChatGPT plus the Wolfram Alpha plugin, amazing. Now finally we get factual accuracy, right? Well, I decided to run some tests and one of the tests I decided to run was this. What's the top speed difference between the fastest land mammal and the fastest sea mammal? This question requires ChatGPT to know what the fastest land and sea mammals were then know their top speed and then calculate the difference. So it's fairly complex. ChatGPT on its own without calling the Wolfram Alpha plugin actually got this kind of right. It gave some pretty broad ranges for some of these top speeds and therefore the answer was a pretty broad range as well. But with the Wolfram Alpha plugin enabled, actually it did a much better job. You can see that it asks Wolfram Alpha what the fastest land mammal speed was and it then gets this answer back. It gets a very specific answer. It also gets a whole bunch of stuff it never asked for, such as what that top speed is as a fraction of the record human powered vehicle land speed or what the tornado classification would be of a tornado that travels that speed. Interestingly though, Wolfram Alpha didn't know the fastest sea mammal speed and it struggled with this. Now you can see ChatGPT getting an answer back, which is basically Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand. So it tries asking again, this time instead of asking the fastest sea mammal speed, it asks the fastest marine mammal speed. And this is a really key role that ChatGPT is playing, basically taking answers from these different plugins, understanding them and where the plugins get stuck proposing a different question to ask. In this case though, Wolfram Alpha still couldn't answer, so ChatGPT actually comes up with its own answer, which is pretty good, including getting the maths right, knowledge. Okay, what about fact checking? Because wouldn't it be amazing to have ChatGPT fact check itself so you didn't have to do it? So in this chat, I activated web browsing and then I asked it a fairly complicated question, which is who is the best-selling female music artist in the UK so far in 2023? Now, the reason this is quite a difficult question is because I don't actually think there's any sort of running total leader board that gives this answer. So it's quite a difficult question to answer. What did it do with this browsing? Well, it basically searched best-selling female music artist 2023. And the answer it gave is Adele. Now, importantly, importantly, it cited its source. And 
Not sure how much I trust this source, but when you have a look at the source, you realize this is a worldwide list of singers. This isn't UK based. And I'm actually not sure that this is about their sales in 2023. This looks like an accumulated sales to date. So I'm not quite sure that it got it right. So I asked it, can you fact check that for me? And it did. Interestingly, when it fact checked it for me, it reworded the question and went to Wikipedia, which is not a bad shout because that's basically what a human would do if they were trying to fact check this. It came back with this answer quite confident and even gave the number of units that Adele has sold. Now, I didn't feel like it was actually answering my question here because I wanted to know about sales in 2023. So I asked for clarification. It admitted that this was sales to date and then offered to go and find me figures for 2023 alone. I said, yes, please. And unfortunately, it couldn't. So I tried the browsing plugin again, this time asking how many reviews does Exposure Ninja have? Exposure Ninja is my digital agency. It did its browser search and came back with the answer, Exposure Ninja has 136 reviews on Trustpilot, 53 on reviews. But when I checked the sources, I realized actually that's not quite true because there are 144 reviews on Trustpilot, not 136. So I asked it to fact check and it said, ah, the number seems to have increased. Well, we do get a lot of reviews, but we don't get eight reviews every 30 seconds. So either it's working from its own internal cache or potentially is working to old versions of internet data. Not too sure. But then I thought, actually, that's not much use because you have to know that the number is wrong in order to ask ChatGPT to fact check it. And if you know that the number's wrong, then you don't need to fact check it. So maybe you could just keep asking ChatGPT if its answer was correct and eventually it would say, yes, damn it, it's correct. So that's what I did. Unfortunately, though, it stopped being able to access the Trustpilot website. So using the browser for fact checking conclusion, inconclusive. The world of AI is changing fast. ChatGPT plugins this week, who knows what else next week. If you want to always make sure that you're on top of what's going on in the world of AI and how it impacts businesses, then don't forget to subscribe to the Powered by AI newsletter at pbai.co. This is a weekly rundown of all the top news in the world of AI so you don't have to sit there on Twitter smashing refresh. All right, what about using ChatGPT for buying products? Surely this, this is the holy grail for so many businesses. Just upload a feed of all your products and ChatGPT is going to sell your stuff to all of the people using it. With integrations with the Shop plugin, which is Shopify's plugin, and Shopify powers a huge number of the world's e-commerce stores. And of course, Klarna, which integrates with a load of e-commerce stores. These two plugins between them have access to a huge amount of e-commerce data. They know products, they know reviews, they know product descriptions, they know where these products are sold, different price points, all that type of stuff. The potential here for e-commerce is massive. Now, when you're using ChatGPT for shopping, you'll notice that if you try and activate the shop and the Klarna plugin at the same time, it won't let you do it because these are basically offering the same thing. So I thought, let's take it in turns. I first asked the Klarna plugin, what should I buy my 40 year old wife for her birthday? She's into fitness and exercise. And because of her 40th, I gave a fairly decent budget. Um, and I asked Klarna for some recommendations and it gave me some recommendations. I've got to say, I'm totally unimpressed with these. If I just gave Kate a strap for a whoop, which she doesn't even own for her 40th, I'm in trouble. But I don't feel like the app got anywhere close to the right recommendations here. But then again, we can see the information that was provided. Fitness equipment. It wants five results with a max price 500. Doesn't even specify the currency. So it's kind of no wonder that the content it got back was basically garbage. It didn't even finish the answer before crashing. All right, let's see if the Shopify shop plugin fares any better. Same prompt. Now, interestingly, ChatGPT came up with some ideas first which was much better. I actually preferred using ChatGPT to brainstorm some ideas. Then I could say, okay, right, fitness equipment sounds good. Let's go with one. And that's when it started asking the Shopify plugin. So ChatGPT then went back to the Shopify plugin and said, okay, find me some adjustable dumbbells, same price and the five results. It then did that converting these prices to British pounds. But to be honest, I found this really difficult. I'll come back to exactly why in just a minute. The next thing we're gonna have a look at is travel. This idea of just telling ChatGPT your holiday plans, your goals, your vision for your holiday, and then ChatGPT using Kayak and Expedia and all these different plugins to basically piece together your perfect holiday for you. You just click the button and book it all. Sounds amazing, right? Let's see if it works. So I enabled the Expedia and the Kayak plugin and said, I'd like to go on a sunny, but not too sunny, holiday, two adults, children five and one we want to do lots of walking balanced bike riding eating delicious food we'd like to go in october half term not sure when that is in the uk and fly from heathrow please could you suggest some destinations chat gpt first calls kayak and says hey we need to go from heathrow we need to go on these dates now that's interesting because i specified 
UK half term. I didn't know what those dates were. Turns out those dates are correct. So ChatGPT has got them from somewhere. Not sure. It's decided to set a budget for me and it's given the number of adults and children both correct and said we need to go between seven and 14 days. So it's made up some of those things for me, but that's okay. But Kayak comes back and says, I don't know what you mean about these number of adults and children. So ChatGPT goes back to Kayak and says, all right, forget about the kids and adults numbers. Just use this information and get me some stuff. And Kayak does. It finds some flights going from Heathrow to these different places and includes their days. Now ChatGPT then seems to look through these answers and work out where the destinations are that I might want to consider based on my criteria. And this was kind of interesting because I sort of expected ChatGPT to first think about my criteria, i.e. balance bike riding and walking and eating lots of delicious food, and then ask Kayak, for flights to specific destinations, but it did it the other way round. And I guess this kind of makes sense because there's no point finding me a great destination with delicious food if you can't get there from Heathrow. It gives me these potential destinations and then gives me a price. Now, obviously the prices are all totally wrong because this is for one person and we're going with four people. <laughs> if only flights still cost that much, eh? On the whole, I was okay with this answer. So I said, all right, what are some child-friendly hotels in these areas, preferably with a 25 meter swimming pool? I knew that it would be most likely to call Expedia for this, and it did. Now it's asked Expedia for these different hotels, but rather than giving Expedia the criteria like child-friendly and 25 meter pool, it's just said, hey, find me some hotels in Los Angeles. Expedia's then found a bunch of hotels in Los Angeles and ChatGPT has just repeated the descriptions that Expedia has given. So some of these include mention of an outdoor pool, but from what I can see, there's no way Expedia would have known to look for that. That must just be a coincidence because the request from ChatGPT didn't mention a pool at all. And that was taking ChatGPT a long time to put together this answer. So I decided to stop it and reiterate, do any of these have pools? I'd ideally like a 25 meter pool, but any indoor pool will do. But it refused to refine its search to include 25 meter pools just telling me whether the hotels it had already recommended included pools <laughs> but is that experience really better than just going onto google and searching los angeles hotel 25 meter pool and getting these hotel results which show you the pool show you what it's like show you the location show you the price all in one go uh, and to be honest that's the main impression i'm getting from chat gpt plugins right now the concept is amazing this idea of being able to take all this data from different places and use the ai as the reasoning to go and tie this all together and present you with your custom tailored answer that idea is fantastic but the reality is this thing is so slow to come up with answers it's honestly difficult to keep your attention as it's going through all of these plugin searches and pulling these answers together. Sometimes it'll take a minute or two to even come up with an answer to a simple question. The speed will improve, sure, and that's definitely going to help the usability here. But it's also so buggy, it frequently times out and I found the browser plugin just doesn't work about half of the time. And that's an issue because something's not going to be your go-to tool if you don't know whether or not it's going to work. Another issue is that you get a sort of range anxiety from the 25 messages every three hours cap. It really puts you on edge and make you think am i asking the right questions knowing that i've only got 24 more messages in the next three hours now of course all of these things will get fixed this is the very early stages of this tool and these plugins are in beta functionality so that's fine but they're not even the biggest issue i found with this whole chat gpt plugins thing the biggest issue i found with chat gpt plugins is whether or not this sort of text interface is really optimal for the functionality that these plugins are offering is this text-based answer with a bunch of links really better than this which shows me pictures of the hotels shows me their prices their ratings some testimonials their location on a map and gives me links to ads other websites booking sites i can change my date nice and easily i can add filters i can look at questions that other people have asked i can see organic results is chat gpt really better or what about for shopping for example when i see these products i know that they're not quite right because i've got loads of other selection criteria in my head which are subconscious it's actually a real hassle having to think through all of those selection criteria and input them into chat gpt by writing them out or even speaking them. That's such hassle. Compare that to Google where I put adjustable dumbbells in, I can click shopping and immediately I get loads of options that I can hunt through. I can see all the prices, I can see where they're sold from, I can see their reviews, I can see if they've got free delivery, special offers, 
and I know that these are going to be delivered to my location, whereas ChatGPT is still giving me products from around the world. And I've got to tell you, it's not going to make sense to ship some 40 kilo dumbbells halfway across the world. The reality is that this sort of true multimodal search, which combines videos and reviews and pictures and maps, is so much more useful than a pure text-based search for so many tasks is so much faster for so many different tasks that OpenAI would love us to be carrying out inside ChatGPT. Let's not forget, this is what computers used to look like when they first came out, basically a text interface. It was only when the graphical user interface came out that adoption really exploded. Because it turns out a picture says a thousand words and it's way easier to shop like this than it is like this. In fact, I'm really sorry to say, but there actually wasn't a single ChatGPT plus plugins use case that I found where I got faster results than I would have got from just Googling. And of course, with Google demoing its own AI integrated search engine, including product listings, this feels like a far better experience for most use cases than ChatGPT plus plugins at this stage. Now, my take is that the winner in the AI wars will be the company that enables people to spend the most money. If ChatGPT is selling you a whole bunch of Expedia holidays, it will be getting revenue from Expedia, which it can use to fund its growth and its expansion. But I would say at the moment, in their current form, ChatGPT plugins are not yet ready to drive significant revenue. And if that continues to be the case, then Google may just win this AI war. Will that be true forever? Well, in tech, nothing is true forever. So of course, it's up to OpenAI and ChatGPT to involve this interface. And it's of course up to the plugin developers to make their plugins more useful. And let's be 100% clear here. In a week where we've seen BT reveal that it's going to axe up to 10,000 jobs to be replaced by AI, Sting predict an existential battle between musicians and AI for the right to produce music, and OpenAI's CEO Sam Altman sit in front of senators and say, I expect there to be a significant an impact on jobs, but exactly what it looks like is very difficult to predict, AI is clearly going to change the world as we know it. But ChatGPT plugins in their current form remind us that the promise of this tech is one thing. It's the execution that is really going to change user behavior or not. And execution is never a guaranteed home run. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you find yourself using ChatGPT plugins for real life use cases? Even if you disagree, I want to hear from you. Until next week, see you soon.